everybody and welcome to the Adam Josh Oral Brog webisode number 50, sorry, 65 we're at now. And I wanted to talk about today uh, where we are um, in history and talk a little bit about prophecy about future events that are coming down uh, the, the pike, the pipe. We've been through this before, I don't remember exactly which one people say, but listening to Honey, Hold Me Closer, Tony Danza. So, to skip right to it and get right to it, let me just say, first of all, that um, for those of you who don't know me, I have a website, adamjosh.com. I've a uh, little bit of a musician, a little bit of a drummer, a little bit of a blogger, um, business operator, manager, and owner. I do a lot of different things, and um, I'm the first to admit that I don't know everything, but what I do have is uh, a willingness to try to understand. I have empathy, and I've been screwed so many times uh, that I know to uh, side with the truth instead of my opinions because uh, I've found in my past that I've been screwed usually and it comes back to bite you when you think that you're right or you're like okay now this time is 100% I have it and then you find out that you're wrong so I side with the truth I made that decision after getting um, my foundation ripped out from under me so many times and maybe it was naive of me to, to think that I could ever be in a corner with my my truth and that's it. So I, uh, I side with whatever the truth is and try to live my life with integrity uh, without hate, envy, or greed and I uh, try to love my friends and those around me uh, like family. I've uh, read what people call the Bible uh, about 12, 13 times. I just finished reading David Wilcox's latest book, The Source Field Investigations. And then I started back in on Proverbs. And now I'm in Ecclesiastes. And it's just something that I do out of routine. It helps me go to sleep at night as well. I've read the Quran three times. have lots of Muslim friends go to the mosque every once in a while. Um, studied Kabbalah for a while, studied uh, Judaism. I just, I like spirituality, I like psychology, I like prophecy, and with all that sort of as an introduction, uh, I'd like to talk a little bit about where we are right now in the world, because I feel like I could have something to add as far as understanding goes. It took me about a half an hour to get everything loaded on the computer here, screen here to have as reference because the websites wouldn't load so I don't know exactly what that's about. I restarted the computer three or four times and have had uh, and a lot of difficulty just trying to say get this uh, on, on, rec on record I guess. So uh, right now we're seeing people in the mainstream media talking about war with Iran and for those of you who don't know anything about Islam or for those of you who don't know anything about geopolitical uh, strategy I've written before I think years ago uh, on the website adamjosh.com I wrote a blog called uh, Temple Stalemate and in it I talked about the linchpin of history the uh, the Dome of the Rock, Al-Aqsa Mosque, uh, what's called Al-Aqsa Mosque on the uh, on the Temple Mount in Jerusalem, where the Herod's Temple, Solomon's Temple, King David's son's Temple, Solomon, and uh, where the last Temple was, you know, two thousand years ago, where the uh, <clears throat> the temple was in Jerusalem. I mean, it's 
it's a history lesson in itself. I don't know how long you want to sit here and listen to me ramble on, but I'm trying to get to something moderately important and don't have time to sidetrack with a history uh, lesson as far as the Temple Mount in Jerusalem goes. Take my word for it. The Al-Aqsa Mosque with that uh, gigantic golden dome in Jerusalem right now is sitting on what's called the Temple Mount. And the western wall that's there, you know, there's a bunch, bunch of faithful uh, Jewish people who stand daily and pray for the temple to be rebuilt. And as long as Islam has control or there's Muslim control over the mosque, they firmly and, and eternally whisper back, no. So, the linchpin of history um, in this uh, Jerusalem Dome of the Rock situation would be like, if you want to set off a global world war between the, what is it, 1.5 billion Muslims, I might be wrong in that estimate, uh, and everybody else, basically, uh, you bomb the Dome of the Rock. And geopolitical strategists obviously know this, and every time there's been skirmishes around the uh, Dome of the Rock, you'll see all of Islam, you know, the world over, unites together against Western powers, Christianity, Judaism, uh, the evil America, etc., uh, etc., et the military-industrial complex. Uh, so, that's one thing, and that's one thing that's sort of always there. As long as the linchpin of history is there and undisturbed, then it sits as like the top of the grenade. You know, if you want to set off a global world war against Islam and Judaism or the West in general, you know, take that pin off the top of the, uh, the grenade and see what happens. And I'm not exaggerating in any sense, and the Muslim friends that I have who are even Western educated and sort of, uh, like you and me, I guess, to talk to would are like, yeah, you know, not that I would pick up arms or whatever, but it would drive a, a world war. And putting that aside and getting to something else sort of in the same vein, Israel, the country, you know, of Israel and Iran, I really don't see a war uh, scenario where Israeli forces would attack the country of Iran for the same reason that they would incite a global um, war against Israel by all the surrounding uh, Islamic countries and this is something that uh, people who don't understand anything about Islam or this dynamic of the conflict just overlook so people are talking like on Fox News and I don't watch any of these networks but I've seen a few videos online uh, Oh, the drum beats to Israel and Iran, like like it's a, like it's a possible thing, like it could actually happen. And so, part of me is is wondering: is this just a big diversion to get people talking while other uh, really important things are happening, or is this part of a bigger scheme? And I try to take the longer view, and like I said before, I I tend to side with with truth and try to take a larger view of history. So it's, I've bounced this idea of Israel and Iran going to war over whatever pre-concocted con concocted, uh, pretexts. Uh, and uh, I've bounced this idea off my Muslim uh, friends and they've said, you know, this is all BS is what they've said. Israel would never go to war with Iran because they would realize it would seal their fate. It would be like nuking. Saudi Arabia, or, you know, what you have this like mutually assured destruction of all the Islamic countries that surround it, retaliating on behalf of Islam. And, and um, he also pointed out, my one of my Muslim friends, that uh, that the weapons have already been sold to Saudi Arabia, Saudi, not Saudi Arabia. He said a whole bunch of weapons have been sold, weapon sales have been sold, yeah, to Saudi Arabia. I was speaking earlier about if they were to attack Mecca in Saudi Arabia, the Holy Land, if Israel did that, it would incite a global war. Just much like if somebody were to, from an Islamic country, claim you know, that they are about to drop a bomb on uh, what I call the linchpin of history, the Dome of the Rock. So, 
he was telling me, my friend, that it's very unlikely that Israel would go to war with uh, Iran directly. They may use proxies like Western powers or like corrupted Saudi Arabian um, powers. And that's another thing to keep in mind is that uh, countries in, in one sense don't really exist. So, you know, the world isn't a square. It's not like this side and that side. It's more fluid and um, clan and family oriented, oriented than most people think. All that being said, I don't think that uh, Israel as a country with its own like IDF troops will go attack Iran in any capacity because they they know the repercussions and geopolitical strategists uh, know the repercussions as well and unless we're in that point of history that Albert Pike talked about which is what I wanted to get to the more important thing now, where to begin? Let's go to David Wilcox's website, divinecosmos.com, and I'll give you a brief rundown. Now, from my understanding of prophecy and like end time events, and I've said and been on record before saying, I honestly do believe it's going to get worse before it gets better. And I'm not alone in that sense, which is sort of ironic and troublesome at the same time, because if you read through scripture, prophetic scripture about the apocalypse, revelation, whatever you want to call it, it's sort of a um, muted down, simplistic way to say the same thing. But yeah, I mean, you, it gets... Uh, worse before it gets better. And I think that's, everybody could agree who's read the book of Revelation or studied end time prophecy. That's sort of a really simplistic summary. It gets worse before it gets better. And the, the, the problem and the reason for my blog today is that the Illuminati, the New World Order, uh, our corrupt geo-elites all see, say the same thing you know, order out of chaos, create the chaos, offer the solution. It gets worse before it gets better. So we're all sort of saying the same thing, and uh, which is sort of troublesome. You know, create the, create the problem, pose as the saviors, offer the solution. Another thing that I've been having sort of in the back of my mind is that the military industrial complex wing of the corrupted global elite could be and are being obviously used as a puppet and on a choke chain leash much like anybody else or much like uh, you know presidents or prime ministers they're on you know they're they're sort of puppets and spokespeople of of higher powers in the chain of command or higher authority if you want to look at it that way so some people uh, not to, and I don't want to get into name calling or whatever, but you know, some people would have you believe that uh, you know David Rockefeller and uh, Ben Bernanke, George Soros is sort of like where the end is. You know, that's the the, the acme, the apex of the spec of the of the spectrum of global dominance, and that's where the you know the that's where it is. That's where command center is from. Now, people don't allow themselves to think, what if they're also being controlled by another group or another influence? David Icke would say that they're being controlled, you know, by another sort of reptilian race agenda or whatever. And like I said, I don't, I'd side with the truth. Let's skip to some uh, David Wilcock information and sort of, I'm, I'm trying to tie this all together. I'm not the best public speaker. I'm not the best at uh, tying things together. Um, it makes more sense when I'm in a meditative state than when I start talking, but I'm gonna do my best. <clears throat> David Wilcock 
talks about in this on his website here this latest entry that many underground bases have been destroyed and uh, under, underground bases like uh, the one at the Denver Colorado Airport or DUMB is the acronym deep underground military bases um, continuity of government type bases that are underground but let me read you uh, some stuff here Collectively, world governments are becoming aware that they are being manipulated and lied to. One of the greatest lies that has been perpetuated by the powers that were is that everybody's in on it. All elected governments, leaders, officials, personnel, etc. That is simply not true. The real powers that have been running the world never show their faces in an election. You will never see anyone above middle management in the race for public office. Many, if not most, elected officials are terrified of these hidden powers. They have been vigorously threatened with fates far worse than death witnessing the gruesome results firsthand if they should ever dare oppose the old world order. Russia, China, Brazil, and India bravely led the charge with the BRIC alliance, which became BRICS when South Africa signed on. From this seed, we now have a massive international coalition involving leaders of over 80 nations, and it's growing by the day. Up until recently, I was unaware that the 80-nation coalition Benjamin Fulford was talking about, see part one, was organizing its financial recovery agenda through this same exact plan, working from the exact same blueprints I've been hearing all along. And I'm going to get to Benjamin Fulford in a second. This public uprising is genuinely terrifying to the old world, old, old, old world order, regardless of their propaganda and disinformation. To the contrary, they had no idea what it would be called once it got started, but they have been playing it, planning it ever since the 1980s for a mass public uprising once the average person realizes how bad she has been mistreated. So we see now, you know, induced Arab Springs and, uh, and uh, Occupy movements, etc., etc. This was also the key point discussed at a recent closed meeting of Congress on September 28th. What the hell do we do now? Super Congress holding super secret meetings, Huffington Post, etc., etc. Uh, and he goes into more uh, articles there. I'm just sort of skimming through some information here. Okay, let's uh, get to the end here. In material such as the Law of One series, which I have heavily validated, validated over a thousand academic references in the source field investigations, we are told that very high-level beings oversee the evolution of people on Earth and millions of other worlds in this galaxy alone. A very precise balance is achieved where the public never experiences anything greater than what they themselves have attracted through the focus of their thoughts. The human mind is the ultimate battlefield. If the powers that work and keep you locked in fear and terror, you will attract more fear and terror, and they win. In their occult system, they know the rules, and one of the main principles is that they have to hide out in the open. They reveal their plans to humanity with very little veiling, if any. One very large but extreme simple example would be the bailouts. If no one cares enough to do anything significant about these plans, then on a very real level, the public is actively chosen to be enslaved. They make this choice by believing that fear is stronger than love. These negative factions do not understand that they are in a very tight choker chain leash from the higher forces. Much like only one party can ever win an election, any one diabolical plan the old world order creates is nothing more than a job application they just filed with management. Guys, could we please nuke the planet? Nope, sorry. Guys, could we maybe kill a few billion people and lighten the load a bit? Afraid not. Okay, well how about a world dictatorship? Forget about it. Can we get them to worship us as gods, create a big disaster, and then appear as their saviors? Nah, buddy. Hmm. Can we try a massive fake alien invasion? Ain't gonna happen. Well, could we at least destroy the American economy and starve everyone out of spite once we get caught? Nah, uh uh. Asshole hippies from outer space, which is one of my favorite parts of this article. One of the most exciting things I've been hearing about lately is that a 10 mile wide spherical UFO is now parked in upper Earth orbit. Over 200 smaller craft have been seen coming and going from the mothership, thanks to round doors opening and closing. This was w all witnessed by personnel within the International Space Station, among others. There are plenty of optics on board that can see craft that would otherwise be cloaked from conventional, visible light spectrum. One of my own staff sent me a write-up 
motoring that they had. It has become very difficult to piece together exactly what's going on since there has been sig a significant clampdown on information in the insider community. However, we do know that some aspects of the mil military industrial complex have made contact with these people and have literally described them as asshole hippies from outer space. The old world order have been told they are being stopped in order to save the trees, the animals, and the people of the planet. What the F do you care about this planet? You don't even live here. F off. And uh, he goes on to talk about the underground bases. According to our best, most trusted insiders, these same tree-hugging ETs have now been clearing out the underground facilities around the world. The first two were near Washington, D.C. and Denver, Colorado. This occurred on the same day that my new book, The Source Field Investigations, was released. This was a great shock to me as the story began coming together over the following weeks. I, as I explained in part one, and as full Ford sources confirmed, and I'm going to get to full Ford in just a minute, so hold that thought. Full Ford sources confirmed each of these bases were destroyed by an explosive force that caused massive surface earthquakes, including the largest East Coast earthquake in over a century. These earthquakes had a very had very unusual properties that were identical to what we see after underground nukes have been detonated. However, we also know that no radiation was involved. Everything apparently got portaled out. Audio recordings of what in occurred inside these bases were captured before their destruction. As a result, the insiders now know that for 24 hours before each of these bases was destroyed, they heard massive sounds of sliding furniture and people yelling and screaming. Part of what is so strange about this is that even tables that were bolted to the floor were unscrewed and removed. All that was left behind was furniture that was broken. By putting two and two together, it appears that massive portals were created inside these bases and all materials of the, and the personnel were pulled out before the first two facilities were destroyed. The destruction, as I said, was apparently caused by a spontaneous 20-fold increase in air pressure. The next reliable piece of information that came was that the powers that were refused to surrender even after this very impressive show of invincible force. I have been told that the amount of equipment, including craft that would have been used to fake an alien invasion that was cleared out, cleared out an alien invasion that was cleared out in the first two events alone was enough to constitute a critical, irreversible defeat for them. Nonetheless, they still refuse to give up. Perhaps they've watched too many sports games and they still want to live by the old adage that it ain't over till it's over. Six additional bases not restricted to the United States were then cleared after the first two. We do not know when this happened or where it happened or and whether or not they were physically destroyed, only that all the materials and personnel were removed. Right near the end of, of, end of September, the next wave occurred, and this time it was much more significant. I was given an exact number and asked not to repeat it. In order to preserve the integrity and trust of my sources, I will withhold these specifics. Suffice it to say that when a sh within a short period of time, perhaps all in the same day, a significantly large number of these bases were all cleared out. The reports, again, are, are the same. Audio recordings reveal that sounds of furniture sliding all over the place and people yelling. In this case, the, the bases are still there, but all the material, spacecraft, etc. have been removed except for broken furniture. Knowing the extreme integrity and trustworthiness that has been built up with these sources, I was so overwhelmed by this news that I completely all lost it and burst into tears when I first heard about this. Part of me lamented for the staff who went through fear and terror as they were pulled into these portholes. I am saddened by the fact that so few of them are even able to under, are even aware that this is happening at all and only find out once it's happening to them. I also cry tears of relief knowing that we are truly being guided and protected and that the most significant events in thousands of year, this years of war are now happening. And then he talks about uh, disclosure of uh, alien off-world technology and ancient technology sort of uh, being disclosed. So you can read that all that for yourself at divinecosmos.com and I am going to attempt now to get to the Benjamin Fulford information and if you stay with me on this train of thought I will be actually getting somewhere with it. Now, Benjamin Fulford uh, was a financial uh, jur financial journalist for the Forbes magazine. He's interviewed David Rockefeller. He speaks fluent Japanese and he uh, in his own words, he is 
a spokesperson for a group called the White Dragon Society, or now called the White Hat Society, which is part of a huge coalition that is uh, attempting and, w and succeeding, at, in his own words, at overthrowing the old world order, as, as David Wilcock calls it, or these, um, you know, uh, he, he'll name them in his own words. He's, he's a part of a group that's trying to overthrow these people anyway, so come here and let's watch this video together. This is a few minutes in, so you'll have to type this up for yourself and watch it, but this is sort of the, the meat of it. There's not going to be a fascist world government. Remember this. We know who these people are. It's the Trilateral Commission, the Bilderbergers, and the Council on Foreign Relations. We're talking about a few hundred old men. We're talking about George Bush. Senior and junior. We're talking about Henry Kissinger, Senator uh, J. Rockefeller. We're talking about Tony Blair. We know who these people are. We know that you are planning to kill four billion people. It's not going to happen. The Pentagon and the agencies are now on our side. We are going to break into the global collateral accounts and make sure that you cannot cut off the money supplies to the White Hats. You must surrender. If you do not surrender, you will lose any chance you have. And that chance is shrinking by the day of uh, being able to appear before a truth and reconciliation committee in exchange for forgiveness of your crimes. That time is running out. You are going to go to jail or worse if you do not stand aside. Uh, humanity is tired of your endless wars. We know that 90% of human savings is going towards murder and uh, crimes against humanity. We don't want this anymore. You are not going to be financed. You are being cut off financially from the rest of the world. Your days are numbered. We want freedom. We want the ability to use our resources to find ways to improve the environment, to end poverty, uh, to end war to explore the universe, to make us all happier and healthier. We are tired of your incompetent rule. You must stand aside. Uh, we have the governments of 57 countries behind us now. The Japanese government will be with us soon. And I believe that the sooner you realize that your days are numbered, the better it is for you. This is your final warning. Thank you. My fellow humans, you will be free soon. You're going to be born into an age of wonder. There will be many, many good things will happen. Once these murderers are out of power, you will find so many wonderful things in your life. I guarantee you this. This is not pie in the sky. This is real. Thank you. Now, the reason I mention all that because I'm I'm getting somewhere with this. And just bear with me and try to follow along and we'll get there. Now, I don't know if any of you know who Albert Pike is, but uh, some credit him with being the founder of Freemasonry. And, of course, he wrote a lot of the books uh, that Freemasonry uh, is sort of used as and is based on. And uh, I'll give you a brief rundown of him now and then get to uh, sort of the crux of the reason for this entry blog. In 1871, Albert Pike, a high-ranking 33rd degree Mason that headed up the Illuminati's back in the late 1800s envisioned and wrote out a plan for three necessary world wars that would help to usher in a new world order under their Luciferian doctrine. As you read the following plans by one of the most influential slash sorry, Luciferian slash satanic Illuminati leaders of all time, keep in mind that the current so-called Arab Spring that has been occurring throughout the Middle East, keep in mind the Arab Spring, Keep in mind how these Muslim countries are all being turned inside 
out and being handed over to the extreme factions. This is being done in order to, tur in order to turn these countries against their all-time nemesis, Israel. The Jewish, Jewish Orthodox Israel, not the Illuminati Zionist controlled Israel, but both will but both will attack and destroy by the invading Muslims of Iran, Turkey, and Syria in this coming war. It is what the Illuminati have envisioned and planned for more than a hundred years. Now the time is here and everywhere we are seeing examples of this. In Egypt just yesterday it was reported one of it was reported of the protesters having torn down the wall to the Israeli embassy. Yesterday too it was reported how Turkey's Prime Minister Erdogan was reported as saying that Turkish Navy ships would now accompany the next humanitarian flotilla. The Palestinians are about to formally apply for statehood to the Illuminati-controlled United Nations, which will have the effect of irking Israel. Iran most likely has already has nuclear weapons either purchased or bought from China and or Russia. Russia. The complete stage is set for Zionism and Islam in the region to destroy each other both being funded and promoted by the satanic Illuminati forces. Because, according to the Illuminati, once Islam and Judaism have mutually destroyed each other and Christianity having been undermined and infiltrated by them, then the ushering in of their Luciferian doctrine to the world stage will be easy. This is why the Arab Spring was brought about by the Illuminati, to usher in their last phase before attempting to install their satanic rule of the world. But according to prophecy, they will be defeated by the Eastern Alliance. In 1871, Albert Pike envisioned three world wars to be followed by an unparalleled economic disaster. Pike's plans have come to fruition, shockingly on target. The people who backed Pike back then are the same elites who back all the world elites today. Albert Pike's letter to Mazzini dated August 15th, 1871. The reason that I'm reading reading this to you on camera is because I've read this before and I was like, holy crap. This is, and I when I read it, I was like, wow, this is like right on schedule. And I'm, I'm not, you know, a, a Freemason or an, I'm not a, a Mason. I'm not a 33rd degree of anything. But uh, I study and I think this type of stuff is interesting. So here we go. The First World War must be brought about in order to permit the Illuminati to overthrow the power of the Tsar's rule in Russia and making of making that country a fortress of atheistic communism. The diver divergences caused by the agentur, agents of the Illuminati between the British and Germanic empires will be used to foment this war. At the end of the world, the end of the war, communism will be built and used in order to destroy the other governments and in order to weaken the religions. The Second World War must be fomented by taking advantage of the differences between the fascists and the political Zionists. This war must be brought about by so that Nazism is destroyed and that the political Zionism will be strong enough to institute a sovereign state in Israel of Israel and Palestine. During the Second World War, international communism must become strong enough in order to balance Christendom, which would be then restrained and held in check until the time when we would need it for the financial cataclysm. The Third World War must be fomented by taking advantage of the differences caused by the agentur of the Illuminati between the political Zionists and the, leader of, the leaders of the Islamic world. This war must be conducted in a way in such a way that Islam, the Muslim of Arabic world, and political Zionism, the state of Israel, mutually destroy each other. Meanwhile, the other nations, once more divided on this issue, will be constrained to fight until the point of complete physical, moral, spiritual, and economic exhaustion. We shall unleash the nihilists and the atheists, and we shall provoke a formidable social cataclysm, which in all its horror will clearly show to the nations the effects of absolute atheism, origin of savagery, and of the most bloody turmoil. Then everywhere, the citizens obliged to defend themselves against the world minority of revolutionaries will exter exterminate those destroyers of civilization and the multitude disillusioned with Christianity whose theistic spirits will from that moment be without compass or direction, anxious for an ideal but without knowing where to render its adoration, will receive the true light through the universal manifestation of the pure doctrine of Lucifer brought, about, brought finally out in the public view. This manifestation will result from the general reactionary movement which will follow the destruction of Christianity and atheism both conquered and exterminated at the same time. Pike wrote about his beliefs and goals in 1871 in Morals and Dogma 
of the ancient and accepted Scottish rite of Freemasonry. In this massive volume, he explained that the blind force of the people is a force that must be economized and also managed. It must be regulated by intellect. To attack the citadel citadels built up on all sides against the human race by superstitions, religion, despotisms, and prejudices. The force must have a brain and a law, then its force, deeds of daring, produce permanent results and produce the permanent results and there is real progress. Then there are sublime conquests when all forces combined and guided by the intellect, Illuminati, and regulated by the rule of right and justice and of combined and systematic movement and effort, the great revolution prepared for the ages will begin to march. It is because force is ill-regulated that revolutions prove failures. Albert Pike, Morals and Dogma of the Ancient and Accepted Scottish Rite of Freemasonry. That's a lot to take in. Uh, a really simplistic way of, of, of summarizing that was in 1870, Albert Pike's vision of the future was to make it get really bad and then offer uh, their solution, the Illuminati's uh, new version of a New World Order solution. And you listen to Benjamin Fulford talking about the White Hats and the uh, White Dragon Society, and it sort of sounds like the same thing. It's getting really bad and uh, we're going to offer a solution. I ran this underground base, bases destroyed idea behind, uh, in front of a few Muslim friends of mine and they said, this is complete BS. And I just bought David Icke's book, or David Wilcox's latest book, Source Field Investigation, so obviously I respect him. I don't think that, I don't think that he's intentionally lying, don't get me wrong. And uh, I don't know the truth of the underground bases being destroyed. And I know that there are underground military bases all over the world. And the military, you know, industrial complex admits it. The Navy, you know, admits it. You can see all this stuff online. And, you know, if you have friends or family in the Navy, you can just ask them and they'll tell you. So when I ran this military industrial complex's base is being destroyed by my Muslim friends, they said, this is BS. They want you to think that the bases have been destroyed so that then you think that you've had a victory. And not only that, but I was thinking later, if a certain faction of people have the technology uh, to portal in or portal out of places, then to get the public to think that uh, they've won, or to think that uh, these underground military bases aren't uh, going to be used as a continuity of agenda, a continuity of government type area during a bio release of a bio plague or or cataclysmic events coming up near December 1st, 2012. They could, you know, portal all their staff out and portal everything out and then just portal back in December 20th, you know, if that, if, say if that was a hypothetical date of, of some incendiary events happening. So, as far as ancient technology or secret technology or future technology goes, it's an entirely other subject, but uh, there's spokespeople for Lockheed and Mar Martin, Northrop Grumman, the Skunk Works divisions of both companies that have come out and and said, like, anything you can imagine, Star Wars type stuff, we have it. Space-based weapons, weapons platforms, uh, man-made spherical UFOs, being able to travel off-world, anti-gravity shielding, portals, jump rooms to Mars, etc., etc. And I believe that that technology exists. I mean, I've seen... Uh, man-made UFOs online. You can see like in the 1940s uh, the Nazis were uh, heavily involved in uh, the occult and um, making the Hanebu, the German flying Nazi bells and discs. And then there's Tesla uh, whose inventions have most of them have all been mar marginalized. All Tesla's anti-gravity free energy technologies and all these things and uh, that could, you know, free energy and get everybody off this uh, grid of electron, elect, 
get fossil fuels and, and all this stuff has been sort of kept back and held uh, by these same people who Benjamin Fulford and David Icke are saying are being over, overthrown. And, or David Wilcock are saying, or being overthrown, have been held back by these same people, by the military-industrial complex, by the geo elites, and by uh, you know the David Rockefellers, trilateral commissions, Bilderbergers, and Illuminati. But what the thought I had earlier was that, like David Wilcock says, these factions are being held on a tight choke chain choker by other forces that he says, like off-world. Uh, human extraterrestrials that only have our best uh, will in mind for humanity and for the earth and uh, they have another plan and for us and they won't allow these psychopathic geo elites to fulfill the Georgia Guidestones and release the or release a bio plague or decrease the population to 500 million and hide in their bunkers while we all die outside so there's a lot to keep in mind uh backing way up as far as the israel iran thing goes it's not been israel's history to get uh as far as i know to get in uh direct conflicts with islamic countries in un, uh, not understanding the severe and well ingrained years and decades and history of hatred between uh, Palestinians in general and classic, you know, Zionist, Israeli type people, and uh, not understanding all that ancient conflict is sort of uh, easy to overlook. This oh, Israel's going to attack Iran. Like it's easy to overlook all that if you're ignorant of um, religious history and the politics between the two faiths and the fact that, as I said all of Islam would unite, not only if there was uh, anything devastating to happen to the linchpin of history, the Dome of the Rock, but also if Israel were to f go after Iran in, in, a, in a public war. But people are also, and Islamic nations and people in general, are waking up more and more thanks to the internet and, and the information that's free flowing like on, online and between like social networking and all, and all that so don't think that your average Muslim uh, nowadays is naive enough to think that there's no such thing as proxy wars or you know so if they see some my my friend was telling me that these weapons were already sold to uh, a whole bunch of military type weapons were already sold to uh, Saudi Arabia and in an attempt to get Muslims fighting against Muslims, infighting. So get the factions, some factions of uh, Saudi Arabia to fight against Iran for Israel. And that's what I was saying earlier. Don't think that, don't think within terms of uh, borders and countries when you're talking about uh, individual rogue families or individual crazy undercover operatives or CIA assets or people that have just been uh, threatened or bought out or whatever. I mean, you can have traitors in any country do anything for whatever reason. Um, and you can have uh, people that don't have any pledge any allegiance to uh, physical borders at all. So keep that in mind when you think of conflicts between countries. Some of them are, you know, below the board. Some of them are above the table, rather, or below the table. You know, world leaders getting together and saying, "Hey, let's have a mutual, mutual war, and let's agree to destroy each other." Like you can read letters between um, colonial kings. You know, I'm talking hundreds of years ago, writing letters to each other that they should have a war to decrease their population because they're both struggling with uh, making ends meet for all their populations. So they say, "Let's reduce our population and have a war." And uh, nowadays, with the advance of technology. And etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. You know, when drones are taking over, uh, the military is being military men are being sort of less and less needed as technology takes over. And uh, another thing that most people don't realize is how many wars or occupations or fronts the military-industrial complex is in right now. And another thing to keep in mind is the fact that with the Afghanistan uh, occupation, sort of. Uh, an active occupation sort of dwindling down 
these military industrial complex people that make money off of selling tanks, ammunition, bombs and guns and all that and planes and all that. They don't want to make less money next year. They want to make more money. So hyping up another conflict, inducing another conflict, like you're seeing this this uh, used car salesman from Mexico or whatever is now a Muslim and uh, it's all not based in reality. The FBI is even saying like we have no idea what they're talking about but and there's no sort of real legitimate ties to this guy actually doing anything for a country for terrorism's sake, you know, but from the vantage point of the military industrial complex, if your if your entire job is to sell weapons and bombs and tanks and all that, I mean, there's gonna be a certain division of your time, a certain percentage of your time that's spent on making work. Right? You've heard of guys that uh, fix windshields that go around at night with a ball-peen hammer and smash out windshields. And then the next day, they get calls, right? Or a dent-fixing dent company goes around and, you know, dents cars during the night or pays somebody to. And it's the make-work program, you know? So there's going to be a certain faction of people, a certain percentage of people in the military-industrial complex's time that profit from, like, war profiteers who are inv heavily invested in creating conflict so they can supply weapons, uh, extend the capital, and this is all the, the global war profiteering cabal that Benjamin Fulford and David Wilcock have been talking about. This network of families, the Rothschilds, Rockefellers, Bushes, and... Uh, you know, one of the minor figureheads being the, you know, Federal Reserve, Ben Bernanke's and all that. And George Soros's. They have media wings and financial wings and et cetera, et cetera. It's, uh, you know, obviously they've been operating for some time, so they're probably a little bit more well-organized than the average Joe Blow on the street with, uh, you know, $100 in his bank and a six-pack in his fridge. And they have a lot more land and et cetera, et cetera. And, uh... So, it's a lot to keep in mind as we're going into these next phases of the 2012 stuff, um, whether or not you believe uh, in sort of uh, galactic alignments and uh, new energetic ages. Um, by the procession of the equinoxes lining up or uh, this end of this uh, 25, 26 year, 1000 cycle. Whether or not you believe in that, there's people that are going to take advantage of the majority or the minority, growing minority of people who do uh, Hillary Clinton and Rahm Emanuel have both said never let a good crisis go to waste. And uh, creating a crisis and then offering the solution, posing as a savior, and creating order out of chaos has sort of been this uh, modus operandi of the Illuminati New World Order in general, and governments understand this. And uh, as I said, unfortunately, uh, my understanding of scripture, my understanding of prophecies and uh, in general, uh, religious futurism in general is it gets better in the end, right? There's gonna be, it's gonna get really bad and then it gets good. So it sort of almost has me thinking that uh, somebody's got uh, a time time machines invented and has gone back and sort of lined up history uh, to their own benefit and is writing the beginning from the end. You know, Christians and uh, would probably say, "Yeah, it's exactly what happened." The Almighty is writing; the, He knows the beginning from the end, and in the end, it all works out, and we're ushered into a golden age. Excuse me. And uh, in the end, God dwells with man, and it's all restored back. And the universe had experienced this temporal divisions of itself and temporal pain and suffering to collectively come back to uh, a new understanding and new oneness and togetherness and what we see right now is Occupy Wall Street movements you know trying to be hijacked by Obama and by you know they want 
he's probably going to try to figure out how to get reelected and use these Occupy movements as a platform. Uh, you can see operatives from other countries uh, it, sort of getting their way into these what may have been organic movements to occupy Wall Street and uh, you know get mad at 99% of people because they have more wealth than the 1%. I think it would be more productive to uh, end the Federal Reserve fractional banking system and uh, fiat money created from nothing out of nowhere. And Benjamin Fulford, I guess, and I would agree on that, right? <laughs> they want a, their idea for a new banking system with the BRICS alliance is to uh, make a basket of commodities based on uh, real assets, which it would be a step in the right direction. And all I know is I'm here in history with an open mind and I'm reading and trying to understand more. And it's sort of like inevitable that things are going to get worse before they get better. And it's sort of, that seems to be how it goes. So as far as you go, uh, you are um, here to grow spiritually and to learn how to live your life without envy, hate, or greed, and to grow as a spiritual soul on, on your life's journey. So there's a lot of things that you can't really uh, stop or control, but you can, as you increase your own awareness and increase your own understanding and consciousness, you affect those around you as we all mutually wake up from our slumber and go towards what we're going towards. Um, I don't think Iran and Israel are going to have a one-on-one -on -one conflict, but then, as I said earlier, if Albert Pike has been right these two times, the third time will be to get uh, the Muslims community, which is 1.5 you know, billion, and the state you know, the Zionist, uh, Israeli sort of state of Israel, separating them between real tribal Israel of the 12 tribes of Israel. I'm sort of differentiating between, you know, the political Israel and the spiritual Israel, if you will. Um, Albert Pike's plan to, from the 1800s, to get the Islamic countries and the Islamic people to mutually destroy the two mutually destroy each other, Israel and Islam. So uh, if that's what we're headed towards, and it's not going to be good because, you know, 1.5 billion Muslims all over are going to be extremely pissed off if anything happens uh, between Israel and Iran or if anything happens to the Dome of the Rock, the linchpin of history, as I've said before. A lot to keep in mind, and uh, I think I've made all the points I wanted to make. So, my apologies for the last few Adam Josh Oral Brogs. My twenty, my thirtieth birthday is coming up in eleven days now, so I've been sort of anxiously getting ready for it, you know. Hold me closer, Tony Danza. Watching the Adam Josh Old Rob. Tell your friends to get a job. <laughs>